you haven't yet, you should check out John Grimsmo's knife making channel. He makes all sorts of really great stuff, and if you like my channel, you'll probably like his more. But one of the things that he has uh, put on his channel that I'm a big fan of is uh, relatively small machines working with titanium. And he had an uh, entire video devoted to how much he loves titanium. And so that inspired me to give it a try. His machine is much larger than mine is. Uh, my X3 mil is known for being relatively uh, flimsy, but I decided to go ahead and, and give it a try and see if I can actually machine titanium efficiently and effectively on my machine. And as you can see from this bag of chips right here, uh, the first test worked out fairly well. Uh, to the point that I'm confident to make this video and uh, and the follow-up videos that I am playing uh, for how the titanium machining comes out. Uh, this is all 6AL4V, so it's not commercially pure, so it's the, it's the hard stuff, and uh, so far it's working out pretty good. There's not a whole lot of uh, videos out there or instructionals out there on how to machine titanium on flimsy machines. Uh, in fact, everything's the opposite. Everybody says you've got to have super... Uh, large, super rigid, uh, you know, hundred thousand dollar machines to effectively machine titanium, um, and, and I'm sure that's true for anybody trying to make money at it. But for a hobbyist, uh, there's got to be a better way. And so I bought a bunch of end mills that you can see here from uh, Mari Tool, Lakeside, uh, Lakeshore Carbide, and then a guy on eBay called um, End Mill Guy. His uh, his packaging says endmillsdirect.com, but I can't find that on the internet. So what I've got here, I've got a uh, four-flute double-ended stub end mill from Lakeshore Carbide. I've got a five-flute end mill from Lakeshore Carbide. All of these are ALTIN coded. Uh, I've, I think this is a, yeah, this, uh, this five-flute is a, a variable five-flute, so I'm looking to see how that works. I've got a six-flute uh, end mill from Mari Tool. A radius, uh, let's see, that's a 0 0.02 inch radius four flute carbide. I've got a Mari Tool variable four flute double ended end mill. Oh, sorry, that's this is the variable. Uh, and then I've got the stock uh, dual ended, double ended four flute carbide end mill from Mary Tool, and then I've got, this is uh, a 3 16 inch double-ended end mill from uh, End Mill Man on eBay, and what's in the machine right now that I don't have showing right now is a uh, in, uh, End Mill Man with a one-quarter inch version of this uh, double-ended end mill. And uh, the video that I'm about to show you is the End Mill Man one. Uh, I find that the standard stock uh, you know, just double-ended, one-quarter inch, uh, half-inch cutting uh, cutting depth uh, between the Lakeshore Carbide, the Mary Tool, and End Mill Man are relatively similar. Uh, the Lakeshore Carbide tends to have one less of the little flutes, if I can get to, I'm not sure if I can get it to show up here. Uh, we'll try it. Uh, let me turn the uh... okay I couldn't get that to work too well by holding it up to the camera so I brought the camera down to the end mills and here you can see the difference uh, the only real difference between these two tools they seem to have the same helix on the left is the lakeshore carbide and it looks like it has one relief cut on the edge there and the Mari tool and the end mill man both have, it looks like a compound, a uh, two relief cuts on the edge of that cutting surface there on each flute. So that's only the, the only real difference. Uh, I don't know if it's going to make a lick of difference on a machine like mine. And I don't know which is better. So I, I guess I'll find that out through trial and uh, error. So I think the goal for me in these videos is to figure out which of these dollar for dollar makes sense. You know, the cheapest one is right here, this uh, this Mari tool double-ended. It's uh, just a little over $14, so $7 per cutting side. And then you've got everything up to the uh, this variable flute, which is $10 more than this one. 
And is it really worth it on a machine that's flimsy like mine to pay 10 extra dollars for an end mill that doesn't have as long of a length of cut? And, uh, you, you know, I, I don't know those questions, uh, the answers to those questions, so hopefully I can find out. Uh, is it worth it to buy these uh, five flute or six flute end mills on a small machine like mine? Well, those are things that I, I hope to answer uh, in the upcoming days as I continue to uh, cut this stuff out. So now I will bring you over to the very first cuts that I made. They were made using the uh, end mills direct, even though it's not really end mills direct, it's end mill man on eBay. I went to that website and it didn't work, but uh, they eBay price was 16 bucks for the quarter inch end mill and that's what I'm about to use to make those chips. And there's my first cuts in 6AL4V titanium, not too shabby. I did uh, two different depths of cut there just for testing. The first one was a uh, 0.375 inch thick depth of cut with a 0 0.02 inch step over. And the second one was a quarter inch depth of cut uh, with the same step over. The 0.375 inch depth of cut I did at 14 inches per minute and the quarter inch depth of cut I did at 20 inches per minute. And uh, the quarter inch depth of cut I think worked a little bit better, maybe a little bit better finish. The machine sounded just a little bit more at ease. And so I think that's probably where I'm going to uh, end up using that whenever I do the heavy milling. So uh, I'm using an ALTIN coated carbide end mill. After the, uh, the process it was cool to the touch and it still feels razor sharp so I don't think that uh, I did much damage there. And uh, it, it looks just like brand new, maybe a little bit of wear there. Overall, the service finish is pretty good. You can see that little uh, mistake right here. My screensaver came on on my mock machine, and so I had to restart, didn't get the exact zero. And since this is just a cutout for a clamp, uh, it's not a big deal. And then this is uh, actually intentional right there. That's the end of the spiral path. I can probably fix that next time. But that's, uh, that's exactly what Cam Bam showed me the result would be. So, uh, titanium's not so impossible after all. And as a bonus shot at the end of this uh, video, it may not be very difficult for you to figure out what I'm going to be making out of this block of 6AL4V titanium. If you watch my channel, this is a uh, 7.2 inches by 11 inches by 1.5 inch thick piece of titanium. And uh, with any luck, the rest of my cuts will go as easily as that one did. And in the future, it's going to take me a while. I'm going to take a long time. I'm going to be very slow and methodical on this because that's a pretty expensive piece of metal. But I may eventually have an AR-15 lower made of titanium.